One of our top stories today is about a travesty going on in Russia regarding the uh, Russian Pollock Producers Association. Uh, these Pollock companies have been under intense investigation by the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service on the grounds that uh, some of their arrangements with Pacific Andes might have violated uh, Russian law in terms of control of natural resources. However, the actual charges that the Federal Monopoly Service lodged against the companies appear to be completely trumped up and irresponsible. If these charges actually are allowed to stick, it's going to show that Russia, far from being a, a true marketplace uh, for international seafood, is much more like a jungle. Let's go into some specifics. After all this investigation, the Monopoly Service did not charge the Pollock companies with any wrongdoing in terms of violating fisheries law regarding international holdings. Instead, they accused their normal business practices of being monopolistic and violations of federal law. But these business practices are in fact essential to the operation of the Pollock fishery and essential for the reputation of the Russian Pollock in the international market and their MSC uh, certification. The Mo Federal Anti-Monopoly Service said that because the Russian Pollock Association divided their catches into an A season and a B season, that therefore this was an example of collusion. And yet, one of the most important conservation issues in the Pollock industry is not having the entire quota for the fishery caught during the winter months when the roe is being produced. The roe Pollock is much more valuable uh, but then just the pollock that's produced with fillets, and if all the producers used all their quota on the row pollock alone, it would devastate the stock by hurting the spawning. So the pollock producers acted in the same way that the rest of the international pollock industry does, and the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service accused them of breaking the law. Secondly, the pollock producers had a problem with poaching of pollock row. And so what they did was they came to an agreement that they wouldn't tolerate a Pollock row yield higher than 4.5% of total catch weight. This is in the normal uh, high range of what you'd expect when you're catching Pollock. What happens under poaching and row stripping, which is illegal under Russian law and under U.S. law, is that the row is taken out and the carcass, the Pollock carcass, is discarded. Under those circumstances, if you had a vessel landing, for example, 10% uh, pollock row versus its fish weight, it would be absolutely evidence that either row stripping was going on or it was purchasing illegal pollock row at sea. So the Russian pollock producers signed an agreement among themselves that no one would be allowed to land uh, at a greater rate than 4.5% of pollock row, which is sort of the natural uh, maximum level. Uh, the Russian Monopoly Service accused them of breaking the law doing this. Uh, again, this is a very standard practice in the Pollock industry and was an effective weapon against uh, poaching of uh, Pollock row. Uh, this has been principally ended. Finally, the Russian Monopoly Service accused them of colluding in the Pollock row auction in foreign markets uh, in, in Korea. Uh, again, the, the Monopoly Service does not understand how this export marketing works. Uh, for many years, in fact, the Japanese were successfully taking advantage of the Russian producers and paying a lower price for their Pollock uh, than for other Pollock rows. <coughs> Excuse me. What the producers did was they got together and said, we need to be more sophisticated about how we approach these auctions. Uh, maybe they um, sort of argued for a minimum price, I'm not sure. But at any rate, this kind of collective approach towards a foreign buyer and a foreign auction system is totally uh, considered to be normal international trade behavior. And again, the Federal Anti-Monopoly Service told the Pollock producers they were found in violation of the law for this. What's going on here? I thought that if these charges were going to be um, uh, effective, there would be something more substantial here. But by looking at the weakness of the charges that the Federal Monopoly Service got a guilty plea or conviction on, it basically uh, illustrates the hollowness of the entire case against the Russian Pollock producers. 
it sort of solidifies the idea that this is a resource and a quota grab and an economic uh, extortion attempt against Pacific Andes rather than evidence of actual collusion or something wrong being done by the producers. I think it's a travesty uh, for the Russian uh, fishing industry to be subject uh, to uh, such uh, treatment from the monopoly service who obviously refuse to understand how the fishery actually works in concluding their investigation. So from our point of view this reflects extremely poorly on the anti-monopoly service and the Russian government, not on the Russian Pollock producers. In Lexington, Mass, this is John Sackton.